interestingly, the terror threat is still at substantial, uh, which means, of course, an attack is likely, which which on its own means that uh, they're hedging the bets. You know, I mean, that's uh, that's the whole point. If you read those terror threats, it's uh, they are hedging the bets. The biggest concern is not necessarily, as we saw in Moscow, a group of people going off and, you know, with guns and firearms and doing doing something huge like that. It's much more around individuals um, who are already radicalised, some of whom are being released from prison, by the way, mm-hmm. which I think is a huge threat. And those people deciding to go and commit uh, terror again. I mean, none of them have been de-radicalised. Uh, uh, in fact, they've all been acting as gang members in, in prison. And so we've got an awful lot of people that can readily self-harm. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't know if you've heard the term gangster jihadis, which is a term I think I think a French minister came out with it. And basically, what they what they're saying, and I think this, I think this is really coming will come to fruition. Generally, terrorists have had difficult to, difficult access to firearms and, and weapons and things. But when they're in prison, they build up links with people who have got those access. You know, serious organised criminals. And I think that that mixture of people who are terrorists mixing with gang gang members and gun runners. Um, is a really quite a scary prospect for the next 10, 15 years. The chances are always going to be high that there is a terrorist attack in the UK. Different in in Europe, I think, because the intelligence services aren't quite so on it over there. And also they've they've got more movement between the continent. So, you know, we've got um, terrorists in Spain, Germany, France, Belgium. But I remember being concerned on the run-up to the Olympics in London. But I think, you know, France... I mean, the threat over there is much greater. A few weeks ago in Moscow was, listen, we are still here, we exist. Now, that's a specific group that are really angry with Russia. But those exist. Uh, those groups do exist across Europe. It was interesting that they chose to, you know, put this edict out about attacking uh, the sports stadiums, the football matches. Absolute nonsense from a, we're going to attack it, That's it's unlikely to happen. However, what it's trying to do is put themselves back on the map. It's like um, a signaler to people within within Europe, if you like. You know, we're still here. This is what we want you to do. When you get the opportunity, go and do it. What concerns me, I think, is in the UK is this growth of terrorists being released back into the community to get up to no good. There's no doubt they'll get up to no good, um, whether they encourage others to commit terror or not. But also the fact that they've got probably more access now to weapons than they've ever had before. In France, they've already got access to guns and things because there's more guns available in, in, in across France and, and Europe. And there's greater numbers. And because of those greater numbers and, and, and real extremes, Paris Olympics is an obvious target. Probably not at the stadiums themselves. More mm. likely, you know, the marathons and the and the tube and the train network, which are going to be less protected than the stadiums. They are, I know, very concerned uh, about the, the the threat of terrorism. You can hit the tube network outside or the train network, and it's still an attack on the, on the Paris games. I, I think you have to understand the sheer numbers of people that hold these extreme views. When you start asking whole communities, do, you know, do you largely support going to Sharia law? And they say yes you realise that we've got big problems and we're importing those problems, um, you know, more and more each day. I would be remarkably surprised if we did not see a terrorist attack uh, on UK or on European soil, certainly in the next few months. Islamic State's coming out with this statement around the quarterfinals, the Champions League. They cannot pull that card too often. Otherwise, they become the boy that cries wolf unless they can garnish the support. And they've had a number of instances recently where they have made those statements and nothing has subsequently followed. Now, that doesn't mean people haven't tried. It means that we've been successful in thwarting it. I have a horrible feeling in my gut that we are in a similar period to where we were pre-2017, which was a notable year of a number of different attacks from Borough Market to Westminster Bridge. These were all events which hit us consecutively. And I hope that individuals are not being complacent about the risk. The threat has not gone away, despite the fact that we don't see it in the press, other than your good, esteemed publication. Uh, Many others will not focus on it. 
And as a result of that, people forget that we as general public also play a critical role in that counterterrorism role uh, or solution in reporting through to the counterterrorism hotline or to the, the, the various other authorities, anything that we've deemed to be suspicious or out of the ordinary. We must never forget they can strike whenever they feel like it. Where these messages should be perhaps more accurately interpreted is that it is a call to arms to those that are not necessarily known. I wouldn't put it past the threat level potentially rising in the next couple of months. Uh, I think we now have to consider that we've got a number of notable events that are going to be taking place this year, mm -hmm. many public events. And one of the things that the British government has not pushed through yet is uh, Protect Duty, which was put together by Feig and Murray in the wake of the Manchester Arena attack, which was the obligation and requirement by public spaces and particularly by major venues to implement counterterrorism measures. With that not being in place, with there, although many will already be adopting those procedures, with it not being imposed as legislation, this leaves potential gaps. And we know with terrorists, they will always look for the weakest link. They'll look for the path of least resistance to carrying out an attack. But I think where we really need to focus our attentions is potentially towards Paris and the Olympics, because I think that will prove to be a very challenging potential event to, 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 to manage. In terms of the ecosystem of various terrorist groups that are out there, we currently have, as on the leaderboard, if you like, uh, Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Houthis. And those are really the five main terrorist groups that we're hearing about. There are many others which are smaller, more fragmented, but certainly what we've seen over the last number of years is a uh, collaboration between some of these groups. In terms of the threat level, yes, we're standing at substantial, which is about mid-range in uh, the chart, if you like, of threat levels that we could be potentially uh, imposed to. But where you have to measure that threat level is in, against a number of different factors that will contribute. And this could be from the interception of chatter between known individuals. It could be down to the resilience by the security services and their success. It could be by GCHQ, uh, their understanding and monitoring of communications. But also it should be against other countries that are also victims of the same threat. Now, when we look at continental Europe, France is at its very highest level. Spain is at its very highest level. Germany is about mid-level like us, and likewise many other countries in Europe. I would not be that surprised if our threat level increases because there are a number of additional factors that we also need to consider, which is the influx of illegals into this country who are generally of male fighting age that could very well be a Trojan horse attack into the United Kingdom. And these are individuals that aren't necessarily known to the security services. These are individuals that are working off the radar. These are individuals that may wish to impose that Sharia law in some shape or form, or to promote the agenda of a group like Islamic State or Al-Qaeda for that matter.